Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today, we're going to be talking about buffers, but we kind of spent a long time on buffers already. So I'm just going to give you one more example of the buffer system, and then we're going to finally talk about acid rain. Okay, so blood. We already looked at ocean acidification, and we looked at the ocean and how the ocean is an example of a buffer system. But what we're going to be looking at next here is another good example, which is blood. So blood's buffer system looks almost exactly the same as the ocean's buffer system, which is kind of interesting. But I'm going to pretend that I'm adding base and I'm adding acid to your blood, and then what kind of is made as a result of that. So remember, we have our buffer system, which is a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base. And so this is my weak acid, carbonic acid, and this is my weak base. This is hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate, okay? And now let's add some acid to your, or so no, let's start with base. Let's add some base to your blood first. So when I add base to your blood, bases are OH minuses normally, right? So we're using our Arrhenius definition right now. And so if this is going to be an acid or a weak acid, it is going to donate a hydrogen and it's going to turn this strong base or this base into water. So notice I'm neutralizing my base and I'm making water. And then what am I making? I'm making another component of my buffer system. So that's kind of nice. I get more of this and I get water as a result. That's what your blood does. Now, what if instead I add acid? So this is the basic part, right? This is our weak conjugate base. So if this is our conjugate base and it's reacting with acid, and again, I'm generically using hydronium ion, the Arrhenius definition here, that means this is going to donate an H from here to here. And so what do I make as a result? When I take an H away from this, I make water again. So look, I'm diluting everything. And I make this other component of my buffer system. So this is how buffer systems work. If you add acid or base, they can pretty much kind of neutralize little bits of acids and bases because every time you add more base or acid, it's making the other component of the buffer. So ideally, they'd be the same. They'd be in equilibrium somehow. But if an acidic substance is entering, then that means that you know, you're going to have more of uh, this as a result. And so what's going to happen is it's going to try to fend that off by making more of the opposite. And so in your blood, you have a very narrow pH range that you can actually live in. And then if it goes beyond that, you either are in acidosis, which means that you know you have too much acid, or you're in alkalosis, which means you have too much base. And then if you get outside of those ranges, you just end up dying because the buffer system breaks down after a certain amount. Okay, You can't just keep adding indefinitely these amounts. If you keep adding acids and bases indefinitely, eventually the buffer system breaks down and it just will lead to, in this case, death. Coral bleaching. All right. So remember, CO2 is a greenhouse gas. We talked about that in you know the last unit. So coral reefs have little algae um, that live inside of their tissues, and that's where they get most of their energy from. It's through that photosynthesis. So the algae photosynthesizes, and it gives some sugar to the coral itself. And so you can even see these are the little algal um, cells, and then this is um, you know the coral. Now, algae eat waste from the coral, provide it with glucose, like I just said, and rising ocean temperatures cause stress to the algae and end up killing them. So um, in fact, what will actually happen is the coral will squeeze out all of the algae. And when they do that, you know, they really can't get a lot of food that way because even though they have these little tentacles they can use to grab stuff, um, they only get a small fraction of their energy from consuming things. Instead, they get most of their energy by these little guys. And so that's what leads to coral bleaching. Last but not least, let's talk about acid rain. All right, acid rain is defined as a precipitation level that has a pH that's less than five, okay? And so depending on where you're located, okay, having a pH of five or less is more common or less common. Uh, notice the East Coast, you have a lot of, you know, actual, um, let's just say, uh, highly acidic rain events that happen. And as you get further and further this way, they get less and less uh, common. But near major cities, they can, you know, kind of get larger and larger. Okay, I'm assuming, ooh, I think that's Denver probably. And then obviously, this is like LA. So several different gases can cause acid rain, right? Because when you mix certain gases and they dissolve into water, what you get are aqueous solutions of things, and that can create unique acidic mixtures. Okay, so let's talk about the big three. First pollutant, how do we make sulfuric acid? To make sulfuric acid, you add sulfur trioxide to water. When you add sulfur trioxide to water, 
it makes an aqueous solution of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is, I don't know why I listed there. Um, sulfuric acid is extremely dangerous. Um, in dilute forms, I mean, it's not as dangerous, which is what you normally find in acid rain, but it can still eat away at paint and stuff. So um, it can, you know, chip away at some of that paint on your car and stuff. How do we make nitric acid? Another good example of acid rain. So nitric acid is also present. Here's one way of making it. There are a bunch of ways, but you can take water and you can mix nitrogen dioxide and oxygen from just, you know, the air. And when you do that, you end up making large amounts of nitric acid as a result. And last but not least, carbonic acid is probably the most prevalent. It's the easiest one. So mix CO2 and water, you get this. If you're wondering why this has a double arrow, it's because this can also work in reverse, okay? This is a weak acid, and these two are definitely not weak. They're pretty strong.